In this video, we are going to be talking about French knots in cross stitch. Hi guys, my name is Marie. This is Caterpillar Cross Stitch Channel. Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be talking about everything I know about French knots in cross stitch. I'm going to show you all my best tips and simplify French knots for anybody who is maybe feeling a little bit intimidated or afraid to try projects that do require French knots. First, let's start with a simple anatomy and step-by-step -step of making a successful French knot on a cross-stitching fabric. Most of the time in cross-stitch, you will be required to use either one or two strands. I am using four just for the exaggeration and so that you can see what I'm doing quite properly. Now, I am going to go up here then i'm holding my thread i'm making two loops and i'm holding it really quite taut this is really has got a really good tension i'll keep on holding it while i slide down or up I slide down with my needle, go back down through a different hole than I came up in. This is important. I will tell you a little bit later why. And as you could see, I am tightening it. I'm pulling it all the way until my knot cannot go any further. So I'm holding my needle like this. I have pulled the thread i'm keeping it very taut I'm, I'm keeping the pressure on and i am sort of halfway uh with my needle inside the fabric now i am going to just pull the needle through the fabric this is just a little bit big i've got a lot of thread on my needle that's why and I am just keeping it, I'm just keeping my finger on here until the last minute when it's time to let go. And if you can see, what happened is the two turns on my needle that we've made created this little sort of rounded area of the knot and then the fact that we've pulled the needle through has created this little area of the knot, right? So if I needed to undo it, I would, I would take it out from here and I would, uh, I would unravel the knot, if you will. Now, you really don't want to make mistakes with French knots because they are not the easiest to unpick to frog. And this is really pretty much it. There is nothing more uh, complicated to the French knot itself than this. So let me just do it again and go maybe a bit slower. So let me go up. I'm holding the thread firmly. I'm making one, two loops and when I go back, I choose a different hole. The reason I'm doing that, I'm going to try to go with, with the, through the same hole. Now, I've got quite a big knot, so it might not be an issue here, but I'm going to show you. So I'm holding it taut. I'm just making sure I keep the tension. I pull through and I go down. And if I try really, really hard, there you go. Oh, even this one. So if you're not careful with your French knots, you can really pull them back because in the end of the day, the French knot itself is really just a little knot on our thread. So that's maybe the trickiest bit with, with French knots that they can slip away, especially if the you know, if you're working on, say, 14 count Ada, as I am working on right now, 
but your called for French knots are only one strand of floss with two turns. So the resulting French knot is going to be really quite delicate and tiny. And that is something that is extremely easy to pull through to the back of the fabric. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to do two turns and I'm going to, so I, I came up here through a normal Ada hole, but on the way back, I'm just going to sort of put my needle somewhere in the middle here uh, where there is, you know, um, um, fabric in between the beginning and the end of my French knot to prevent it from slipping behind my fabric. Okay, and that is it. That is my French knot. Let me do it again. Okay, two turns and go somewhere in the middle to place fabric or anything else or any or maybe threads of an existing of an existing stitching which is what we usually do isn't it we usually have a stitched area and then we just place our french knots where the pattern calls for it so as you can see, I'm just plowing on, I'm just doing my French knots. The most important thing is to hold it until uh, quite late in uh, creation of the French knot. Because if I don't, if I just let go, can you see? It's already distorting. It's already looking untidy. And oh my goodness, this didn't go well at all, did it? So... The most important thing is to hold it, keep it taut while doing the spins, keep it taut, try to sort of, if you could see that, I sort of used, put pressure so that my French knot traveled from middle of the needle towards the bottom until it touches uh, the fabric. I'm still keeping it taut really quite close to the knot itself I push through and there we go and that really is it in terms of French knots there is no need to be scared of them what I would recommend is that you practice uh, separately before you sort of start making them on a project i know that a lot of people are replacing french knots with beading i personally to be quite honest with you find beading more challenging than making french knots because if you do these very easy steps they come out really really quite neat and tidy all you need to do is keep the tension and make sure that you start the knot uh, in one place of the fabric and finish it in another place of the fabric so that there is something for the knot to hold on to in between the beginning and the start so that it doesn't just slip behind. I'm really pulling, I'm really pulling quite hard right now and you can see that my knot is just staying on top of the fabric. It's not slipping in any sort of way. So now that we know the individual steps and the theory of the French knot, let's look at how does it look like in a stitched area when you're putting your French knots on top of already stitched cross stitches. Okay, so this is my tiny little freehand flower. At Caterpillar Cross Stitch, we don't have any patterns that that require French knots. That's why they're so beginner friendly and, you know, for, really good for people who don't want to fuss with any backstitching or French knots. So that's why I have just freehanded this tiny little flower. And we are going to be using French knots to just enhance the middle of the flower here. 
the colors are really enhanced just to uh, create contrast so that you can see it really well and they're not representative of what an actual pattern with uh, French knots would, would look like. Uh, French knots are typically used to enhance plants, uh, flowers, animals, um, typically eyes or nose, um, and anything to do with nature and sort of creating the fluffiness. So let's add some French knots, just freehanding them somewhere in the center of this flower. To start the thread, because I already have quite a lot of stitched area over here, I'm just going to run it behind my existing stitches. I've got a tiny little, um, a tiny little quilter's knot on the back and I'm just going to turn around and I'm done. And let's just go. So if I want to have my French knot somewhere over here, and if you remember when we did this, we said that the French knot has to begin and end um, at slightly different sort of space in the fabric. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here, turn twice. I'm doing it just with one thread, as you can see, which is a typical, typical requirement of a cross-stitching um, cross design uh, that requires French knots. And I am going to press somewhere here, sort of in the middle, um, just to make sure that I've got some thread of the fabric in between my beginning and end of the knot and that is it can you see it so i'm going to go up here again i'm going to do my two turns i'm going to press down i have pulled the thread kept the tension and i'm going down here and you're literally just going to go one by one doing this. The cold for place doesn't necessarily need to be just where my stitches meet. It could be in the middle easily. So I might need to come up here in the middle of uh, my stitch which is actually really quite nice because you don't need to worry about your French not slipping because you're just, it's naturally sort of caught uh, by the, the fabric and the threads of your stitch. It can also be in the middle somewhere here. So sort of not where the beginning and the end of the stitches are, but somewhere in the middle easily. I'm just making sure that I enter and exit in a different way uh, where else it can be. I think that's pretty much it. It's either where my threads meet or it's right bang in the middle of a stitch of an existing stitch, which can be a bit of a challenge getting it up, up there, but it's doable. Or as we said, it can be sort of in between the stitches but not where the threads of the stitches begin and end and this is it what i would just say is trust the process with the french knots um i know they can be a little bit challenging sometimes the shape doesn't really come out that great now if that happens it is a little bit of a challenge to frog so over here you can see that i've just taken it out on one end and what you can see is the french knot is nothing else but a knot on my thread so if you haven't made it too um too tight it should be possible to un undo them just find find the one that you can loosen just like just like as if you had a little knot on 
your um your your thread you know when and when your when your thread knots up in the middle of stitching it should be possible to do that but as you can see like i'm even if my french knot is not perfect like this one didn't come out quite right you know this one i know that in the end it is going to be okay even if the individual ones are not 100 percent perfect so frogging french knot is something that i keep for absolute emergencies and i simply try to not have to do that like at all in terms of how many strands and how many loops to do around your needle this really should be dependent on mm, your chart if your chart does not specify whether you should have one strand or uh, two strands or whether you turn twice or three times then just remember that the more uh, strands you have the bigger the french knot will be so over here it's a tiny french knot it's two turns with one strand of floss the same two turns with four strands of floss are significantly bigger. So always take a look at, okay, so am, do I have tiny crosses with one strand uh, on 40 count? So that means that I will definitely be interested in tiny uh, French knots unless, you know, otherwise called for. And if I have an 11 count with three strands, you know, full crosses, and it's really quite bulky, quite large, then perhaps my French knot could be larger as well, just to stand out a little bit more. But this really should be in the instructions of uh, of your cross stitch. And if you are really unsure and if you're worried that you know you're not gonna you're not going to do it right, you can always contact the designer or the company and they should be able to tell you how many strands and how many turns are called for. But what I'd say just don't be afraid of experimenting a little bit as well. Um maybe do it on a scrap piece of fabric like mine here uh, just to see how would it look like if you if you experiment with the number of threads and the number of turns and see what would you personally like for your project that calls for using french knots I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful. Please let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you like to share your experience with French knots. If you liked this tutorial, please consider subscribing if you're not already and pressing a like on this video to let us know that we should be creating more of these tutorials in the future and consider ringing that little bell so that you are notified every time we post a tutorial like this which is every Monday at 7 p.m. If you do give French Knots a go please tag us on our social media on Instagram or Facebook or share in our Facebook groups so that we can see your work. It makes us so happy anytime you let us know that you've tried a new more advanced technique thanks to our tutorial, so please continue doing so. We love to hear it. And this is it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch this week. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.